Hello and welcome back to Fire Emblem Engage. You find us here in the training area for one reason and one reason only. Because we have a lot of people who have a lot of skills available and we now have pretty much our full complement of skills to look at. Now, does this mean that we're going to put skills on everybody? No. And there's a reason for that. And I'm going to show off this reason with Marth. Marth has 10 skills, but there are another 10 and there is a chance that he can get something new in them that we might want. Uh, for instance, I'm just going to try and find somebody who might have one. Did we do Ike's? We did Ike's, yeah. So for instance, Ike has Wrath, right? Which is a level 13 spell. There's no indication that he would get that spell in the first 10 levels, so potentially we still want to hold out for doing some of the extra power locks. I do realize, however, that if I keep doing that, we're only actually going to have these abilities for one fight right at the end, uh, because we're going to wait that long, but, you know, it's something to think about. Anyway, having said that, I've looked through some of our characters, and I have some rough ideas about what we're going to get them. Now, to start with, I have looked a lot into the main character because the main character is one where we have a lot of different options and there are potentially different ways that we can handle it. So what I've been looking at for them is what do I want them to do? Like what's their goal in life? And one thing I have noticed is that we have incredibly high AVO on them, right? Like their AVO is really, really high. Because if we think about what the AVO you get in the fog is, I think Zelkov, now I might be wrong, is hitting like 145, something like that. It might be higher, I might be misremembering, in which case this is kind of a worthless point, but I think he was hitting like 145 in the fog. We are currently 102 as a base. Now, if we go down Marf's path, we can actually get, like, at the very least, up to 20 AVO. And we're assuming that if we do Marth's Paralog, that's going to keep going up. Which gives us a very good idea of what we want to do. We could potentially go heavy into Avo. It's an option. Another option I've thought about is we go down to Roy, and we have a look at Holdout. Because, you know, if we're going to have you at the front, if we're not going to dodge, the other option is we just don't die. It's equally good. Another, another option is that we go, okay, I would like to dodge. However, Lin could provide us extra speed via something like Speed Taker. So we could say, okay, we stack that speed, that gives us AVO. I believe that you gain AVO equal to double your speed, which lines up if we look at this here. Roy gives us zero extra speed, she gives us five, and our AVO goes up by ten. So that's an option. So we could potentially go into a speed-based build. And then that would then give us more AVO. Speed Taker would then get us an extra 10 AVO, which effectively... Sorry, we'd get an extra 10 speed, which is effectively an extra 20 AVO, which you can see how that would work pretty well. Um, we could go... Another one I went for was... Um, I'd probably not go for overall is Gentility. Uh, we could get the plus version of that, which would allow us to take 5 less damage. Again, very good for a frontliner. Basically, I'm looking for something that will let us frontline. So this is an option. However, I think a better version of Gentility would be Ike, who has um, Resolve Plus. So if you have five, uh, 7 Defense uh, or Res, effectively against nearly every enemy, that's going to come out better, right? Because it's going to be 7 damage off instead of 5 damage off. So potentially an option there. Um, in terms of Avo, I did look into another one, which is Lucina. Lucina has an ability called Dual Support. Grants a bonus to Avo that increases with unit support level with adjacent allies. Now, given that we're planning on maxing out all the supports, and you get a maximum of 90 Avo for this, this one could end up being our best um, like way of gaining, gaining Avo. Now, I'm assuming because it's 90, I'm just thinking 90, I've done this before. No, there's only 8 squares around you. I don't know how you get max in 90. Uh, with... Uh, adjacent units. I'm trying to think. Nine, does 90 divide into 4? Maybe? Possibly? This is the kind of thing I should work out beforehand. 90 does not divide into 4 unless we're doing uh, half, like, you know, uh, half percentages. But, yeah, anyway. Because I was thinking maybe it's only directly adjacent and then it doesn't quite... Anyway, it doesn't, doesn't quite add up either, no matter how you do it. But essentially, this would give us a huge amount of AVO as well. So, potentially, dual support is good. Um, another one. Corrin. Corrin HP, potentially again, 
it's just another way to survive. It's, it's similar kind of logic to the Ike and Erica options, which is that, okay, maybe we don't rely on Avo and we just become bulky. And then the last one I looked at was Byleth, because I was like, okay, if we're after Avo, why don't I just get Luck, right? Because that would work. Luck is half Luck into Avo, therefore this is just strictly worse if we're looking for Avo than any of our other options, right? It's potentially an, an okay thing. I think luck also gives us crit dodge, but like, I don't think we need that. Anyway, so, essentially what I'm saying is, I think we're going down Avo, and I think our only real two options, well, three options are, we get flat Avo from Marth, we gain Speed Taker, which is equal to Marth right now, but Marth is probably gonna stack up, or we gain um, dual support, which is probably gonna outperform as long as we're standing next to other characters. And actually, we want to stand next to other characters all the time, thanks to Divinely Inspiring. So, I guess we're gonna go for Lucina's. So, what do we need to do this? Well, we are going to use the Somnial map, we're gonna go to the Ring Chamber, and we are gonna buff uh, our support with Lucina, if we can, by using the Ring. Then we're gonna go back and do training, and then we're gonna work out where we get to. So polish ring, Lucina, us. Let's go. And you Sorry know what? About the hassle. I think the game is trying was trying to hint at us that dual support might be good for the main character because it gives you Lucina specifically um, after chapter eleven, right? Now, and really we chose to put work. Lucina on all crest instead. What are you doing? But the fact it gives us Lucina You're is time. an interesting uh, You're side wasting of things time. here. You're wasting time. Apparently, I'm wasting time. You're wasting time. Okay, this side. You're really getting there into we go. your work. Uh, this one. You're wasting, wasting time. time. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm, not quite. That was nice. There we you. go. Perfect. Thank you. So after all of that, that gives us bond up. That means that we can hop our way back over to the other chamber. It would be nice. I know they've made it easier, right? Then you can inherit skills from the other chamber. I would love to be able to raise Bond in that chamber as well. I'd like it in both places, but you know, I'll take the quality of life things that I've got, or that, is, uh, that they've given us now and I'll like it. Okay, so Lucina. We're aiming to get to where with Lucina? We're aiming to get to... Uh, 13. Okay. So let's go. Let's have a good match. I am Lucina. Let's see what you can do. Oh, I think Lucina's gonna beat us. Although, there's a chance. You're as strong as I expected. Nope. <laughs> there wasn't as much of a chance as I thought. Because she's won. Thank you for the hope you showed me back then. If not for you, I might have given up. I only gave you a small push. You'll be carving your own future for yourself. As an emblem, because now we're one of you. Okay, cool. I did also look at dual assist here, but I don't think we can use it from my understanding, right? Uh, because dual assist is the one that lets you get the chain attack, or if you're able to chain attack, um, you can get it by moving, but I, we're not able to chain attack, so we can't do that. I think the only reason all Crest can is he gets chain attack from having opponent. Lucina. Lucina, Unless a misunderstanding. Of has but anyway. arrived. Either way, it's not going to help us. It was just like a, it was a thought. Logically, we should win one of these battles as well at some point. I worry sometimes if we're really capable of winning this war. I know things can seem bleak. But as long as you hold out hope, you can drive the dark away. Were her eyes pulsating? I don't think they're meant to do that. Right. And now we get our last couple of levels. Yo, we we're only going to 13. Let's go. No holding back. I am Lucina. Let's see what you can do. Come on, let's win one. And hit, we need her to miss. You're as strong as I nope, well, turns out we do need Avo. 
Okay. We leveled up to 13. And then now he gets his dual support. I don't know if dual support is the best one, but it seems like it's going to be like at least neutral. Neutrally good, which would be fine. I don't know if we have enough points, but let's see. Uh, we may have to go and get some points as well. We need another 400 points. Okay. Well, 305 points. Let's have a look here. Should be something for us in here somewhere. Don't need 500, uh, so 305. So, like, a bunch of novice boots would be the best way of doing this. Okay. That's fine. Use. I mean, optimally, we would just go and get 5 SP by doing, like, a single fight, but I'm impatient. I would like to get it now. Let's go. Inherit skills, and we shall now inherit uh, this skill. There we go. And then I would like to manage skills and equip it. Now, our 5 speed is one that we could potentially get rid of. I'm not 100% sold on it. But, like, we could, in theory, get rid of it for a uh, speed taker. Oh, another one I did look at, actually, as well, um, was Alacrity. Alacrity potentially is amazing, because we have three attacks. Um, it, it's potentially still good. But I was thinking if we don't have Lin, the speed advantage won't be as high, because we won't have the plus five speed, plus five speed from her, and then the plus ten from speed taker. So we might not get the double hit every single time, so... Potentially that's going to fall off, but I don't know. I don't know. Potentially it doesn't. Right. Louis. His is much easier, at least for what I looked at initially. Uh, Louis has two options, as far as I can see. Uh, I just want to do this on a different screen. I want to do this on the emblem ring screen. Just because then we can see our stats. Louis, basically I think that... Um, actually, I think I wrote down some of Louis for a different character, um, which is my note failing. Um, so actually, no, Louis has one option. <laughs> I think with, with Louis, we should raise his with, um, where are we? With Sigurd. And we should get ourselves um, Lance Power 5. Right? At some point, we should do that. Yeah. I think this is the, that's, that's the sensible thing to do with Louis. Um, because I think Lance Power 2 has been alright for us. So I think just raising that up. How much does it cost? Let's have a look. We might wait on Louis. We'll see. He, he's not like underperforming right now. Uh, so Sigurd. We want Lance Power 5. That's 3000 SP. Okay, he can wait till the end. Now the person who I actually wrote down my notes for was Pandreo. Pandreo, I think we have two obvious options for him here. One, we raise his speed. Two, we raise his magic. He is a damage dealer. Those are the two stats that matter to him. Nothing else matters. Now, raising his speed has a double use. If we raise his speed, it raises his avo. His avo is incredibly high thanks to his ability, party animal. So in theory, that seems like a really good path to take him down. It can it continues to increase his avo, which can, continues to increase his advantage. Um, and it allows us to double hit pretty much everything. Crazy as magic, though, does give us a little bit more oomph behind his spells. But I guess if we're double hitting, like, does anything live a double hit from him? I don't know. I don't know if anything lives through a double hit from him. So, there are two... Well, I've also been told that um, Silence Ward might not be useful going forward. Because silence is related, to, uh, silence ward can silence can only be applied via a staff. The staff has to hit against your res. He has like an extremely high res, therefore his that's not going to work, right? So potentially we can also ditch that. So let's have a look at Pandreo and ju just from a like what what are we thinking standpoint. One that could be good is Lin. Lin for the same reasons that Lin is good on everyone else who we want speed on. Speed Taker and Speed. Uh, speed Taker would probably be pretty good on him. The ability to get the extra uh, stacking speed is pretty good because he gets kills a lot. I'm thinking actually maybe Speed Taker plus Alacrity could be 
it could go really hard. Like that could go, that could be very good, right? If we do that, um, it means that we would get a lot of double hits right off the bat. We could send him into more dangerous situations, but I guess if we're trying to make him ranged and avil, that doesn't really fit into that. Maybe we just go flat speed plus um, speed taker. We just basically have him as like a really fast character. Oh no. Um, how many SP points does he have? He has 2,965. Um, that is quite a lot. Is quite a lot. Uh, I need to go to inherit skills now so I can check how much these cost. So, uh, out of there. Lin. How much does your speed is 2,000? Your speed taker is 2,000. So we could potentially go speed taker, get getting points in speed up to speed plus three. Yeah, and then we just get them when we come back. That'd be good. Yeah, so we would push him up to um, level nine. Well, probably level ten. I guess we would push him up to. Okay. Let's do it. Let's just do it. That seems good. Pandrail. Lin. We're gonna go to level 10. I think we just take speed taker and speed. I think it's just that simple. I am Let's not overthink it. A royal soldier of soul. If he needs magic, we can pivot. I won't be holding back. Uh, if he needs magic, we probably take off speed taker no and then um, swap it with um, like just the pure magic stat from Celica. There's a time for partying and a time for praying. In my church, we make time for both. Partying? I've never heard of such a church. I bet you're calmer around the Divine Dragon. Okay. That's fine. So we get these. We'll now follow it up with uh, the level 10 conversation. Let's go. I'm just going to level 10 because we can and it gets us all five Come, right now. Pray with me. I'm Lin. Get ready. Oh, yeah. We 100% we lose. Why am I even paying victory. attention? We won? What? She must have missed. Okay, never mind. I heard you singing, so I stopped by to listen and saw you flailing about so strangely. Oh, that's just my prayer dance. My friends call it the Dance of Darkness because it's so awful. <laughs> oh. Poor Pandreo. Okay, so that gets us that, and we can now go into Inherit Skills, and we can get him some skills. So, let's go into Lin, we're getting Speed Taker, and we're getting Speed Plus 3, which is as far as he can go in Speed until he gets a little bit more SP, which he will no doubt get in time. Unequip Silence Ward. I guess the other thing is, we could always just equip Silence Ward if the enemy has a Silence. Right? That's the other thing. We, we can, in theory, just unequip and re-equip these at will, so that's fine. Right. Next unit. Hortensia. Hortensia. Uh, the... I, like, honestly, she seems fine. The thing I think Hortensia needs is she just needs her, um, like, HP raised. Right? That seems like the obvious thing. But even then, I don't think it's that big a deal. I think we just wait and we let get the SP naturally. So essentially, I'm saying Hortensia, nothing to do. Allcrest, again, I feel like he, you're fine. I think the only thing he needs is he needs dex increases. However, he doesn't have any SP. So I'm going to leave him for just now. Jean. Jean. Now, he could also just get his HP raised, which is potentially the right move. He does, oh, he does have enough to get the next rank if we want to get it. The other option of Jean is that we switch his secondary to something else. Uh, he currently has quality time as well, which we could potentially switch. He's got a few options. We could uh, move him into, I don't know, like, even, actually, I was just saying Vantage there. Even something like that could be pretty nice if we get Vantage++. Plus plus. He can then, if he's not at full HP, um counter enemy attacks and he does a lot of damage potentially that's something for him i think we leave sean for just now you're going to hear that quite a lot going forward and they i think we should leave them zelkov is one i haven't figured out yet he he's one that i've looked at and i've been like huh 
There's something we need to do with him. He needs more damage, but I don't know how we're gonna get that to happen. For knife precision, grants hit slash avo. Again, not really what we're looking for. What is it? What what do we need? I get I think momentum doesn't make any sense. I mean, vantage is probably pretty good for him, although we don't really think he's gonna get hit that often. Maybe just pure strength. Maybe we wait and see what Roy gives us. Because maybe Roy has like a powerful strength thing that we could get. Let's see what else we've, we've got in here. Like, yeah, nothing for you. Like, yeah, not, none of that seems any good. Nope, nope. He's, he's kind of just in an awkward spot right now. Um, nothing is like amazingly good on him. I think we have to wait to get some people's things finished. Like, he seems like a Roy one would be good to get something off of. Maybe there's something in Marth or Celica for him. Unlikely Celica, but maybe something in Marth. Um, Marin. I feel like Marin is kind of working. I think she just needs upgrades on both of her ones. Does she have enough for either upgrade? Not immediately. So we could give her points again, but I don't think we're, we're not going to push it up. Kagetsu, I have no idea again. He, he's again one where I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we could raise his bond with Lin, which is probably worth doing, at the very least, so we can grab Speed Taker initially and have it used in combat. I think that's going to be useful to do, um, because currently I don't believe he can even use Speed Taker. Yeah, so that's probably going to be useful, um, but that's not actually an ability. That's just a thing we would like him to have. I think maybe strength could be good on him. Again, like it seems like maybe finishing Roy's one is a good one to have a look at. Um, just to see what kind of things are offered. I don't think sword power is that good, but maybe there's something in there. Marth is also sword. He does have sword agility, which is opposite of what we're wanting. But maybe there's something in there. Is there another sword one? No. Those are the two sword options. I, I just don't know what to get him. I don't know what to get him. Oh, sword focus. Never mind, there's one. Hit at the cost of dodge? I mean, hit's not our problem. Really, we would like some crit, but I guess we get crit via dex, but even that, that's not really what I want. Yeah, see, this is kind of how we go. We could get dual assist, I suppose. Like, then he could, um, he could be more useful when he's not directly in the front line, means he doesn't have to use the Leaven Sword, potentially, or if he does use the Leaven Sword, he can attack from further away. Yeah, maybe dual assist plus is the way for him to go. How many SP points does he have? He's at 1,800. Yeah, maybe we'll take Jewel Assist as one. Maybe we'll buy that and, and we'll get Jewel Assist Plus. It means he does need to get to level 20 with um, Lucina. That's okay. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll figure out what else to get him later. I think Jewel Assist Plus definitely seems good as he can actually, you know, make use of it, unlike a lot of other characters. Let's go. Kagetsu, at your service. Come. He might win these skill. fights. He does have a crit Lucina, weapon. Lucina, Princess of Elise, has arrived. We could have been friends. There we go. I can go on. Uh, so he will was win. Fun, he not? actually does more damage as well, so he should win every one of these. Your skill is just what I would expect of an emblem. Will you face me in mock combat? I've been admiring your swordplay as well. I'd be delighted to spar with you. Cool. So that's them got that. We're now going to rank it up again. So we're going to go in here with Kagetsu. We're going to go with Lucina. We're going to go up to rank 10. We're going to get another conversation. I am Kagetsu of Illusia. I am Lucina. Let's see what you can do. It was fun, was it not? He won again. He should win every one of these. He wins on pure damage. All your training has paid off, Kagetsu. You were spectacular in that last battle. And he also wins if he crits, so... I am glad to hear you say so. And even more glad we are such good friends. Wonderful. Okay. And we're just gonna keep pushing that, um... Yeah, pushing that one up. We are spending a lot of our points doing this, but I think it's worth it. Definitely feel like it's going to be worth it in the end. Will you go out with me? Lucina, Princess of Elise, has arrived. It was fun, was it not? It's a bit weird when you start to ask this 
the spirits that live in rings, whether they'll go out with you. It's a very odd thing to ask. Anyway. Carrying on. Kengetsu. Lucina. I mean, we only have to go to 18, but we might as well go to 20. We're, we're right there, you know? I am Kagetsu of Illusia. I'm Lucina. Spar with me. Precision power! It was fun, was it not? So, he wins. What drives you to grow stronger, Kagetsu? It is very simple. If I am to climb this mountain we call life, I wish to see it from its peak. A noble goal. That simple determination might be the key to your success. And you, my friend and rival, are one step along my path to greatness. Prepare to be surpassed. Awesome. All right, so we finished that one. Gets us these things, and now we can go and buy the ability, although we need to get him another 2,000, not 2,000, 200 points. Hey. Yeah, we need to get him two 2,000 points, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so two novice boots. There we go. We'll do it again. It's not a waste on him, because he only has... Um, like, well, he's only going to have one ability after this anyway, so he still needs to get points for the next ability. Inherit skills. Kigetsu. And then we're going to try and get him these skills. So let's go Dual Assist Plus. Here we go. I do think Dex is potentially just an option for him. I don't, I don't know how much I like it. How much does a single point of Dex get you in terms of crit? That's something we can look up. I also just realized I could have equipped it from there, but whatever. Right, uh, Kigetsu. Um, oh, I've gone completely wrong here. Manage skills, there we go. Right, so now you can attack from further away. Let's have a look in here. It's actually a very easy way of telling. So he gets one dex from this. Uh, anyone give no dex? You give no dex. So dex gives zero crit? Oh no, every two dex gives one crit, I think. If we go to Lucina, we should be able to tell. Yes, every two dex gives one crit. So if we got five crit, he would get... If he got five more decks, he would get um, two more crit. Which is potentially good, but like, yeah. Anyway, it's something to think about. Right, uh, so now we've done that, the next one on our list uh, is not you. I'm also in the wrong menu. I think. Um, no, this menu works, right. Uh, you have quality time plus and you have staff mastery five. Honestly, you're set. Panette? Uh, I feel like there's room to improve with Panette, but nothing we need to drastically change. I want to see how she performs in the new class. And then we get to Mavier and Vale. I have no idea. My only thought is Vale can definitely use with a, a, a speed up, so potentially she could go down the same path that we just put Pandreo down. Give her a bunch of speed. She might actually benefit from the magic, but you know, give her a bunch of speed and see how we go there. And then Mavier, I was also thinking speed could potentially be good, but it could also be good to just go further into what he's already doing. So maybe give him hold out as a thing. Like that could be very nice for him to have hold out, given that um, he also has great aether. So if he can survive an extra hit that would kill him, he then heals up to full. It gives him a, you know, it has some natural synergy between those abilities. But with both of them, I'm going to leave it for just now, because we never actually used them in combat, like in anger, as in we haven't set them up and used them in combat. So, yeah, I don't really know what they need. I'm just working off of stats. And stats work, but not 100% of the time, if that makes sense, right? They give you a rough idea, but they don't necessarily give you anything, or everything. Right. Oh, we do also have one other party member. We do have Gold Mary. I think Gold Mary is fine. I think Gold Mary needs momentum up and HP up. I think she's fine. Potentially. Right. Although she could also do with, like... Does she get Vantage because she's on Leaf? She does get Vantage, so actually Holdout could be much better than the HP, potentially. 
like hold out could be very nice because then she can run in there get hold out that then lets her vantage trigger she switches to the right weapon you can see how that might work but anyway right now that we've done all that there's a reason why we've been doing one of these um like hey we're gonna be in the somnia we're gonna be leveling up we're gonna be you know improving characters episodes because i've already checked the world map and we have something very rare and we're gonna have a look at it it is of course a skirmish so uh we're gonna do that and i felt it was worth doing an episode where we you know got our inventory sorted while we do this skirmish because then we can do like two things at once if that makes sense we're two things that kind of work well together and then we can try out some of the characters that we've just changed see what new things we need and try out some of our other characters and see what things we need all this makes sense to me now, it does say advanced class level 15 that is scary because if we go and have a look at the next main mission i'm assuming that is not going to say 15. That's going to say 14. I mean, it's not that far off, but still. <laughs> it is more difficult than the next main quest, in theory. Let's go. I wish to begin the skirmish. It's also on a crazy map. Uh, because it could potentially have the turrets on either side. But, you know, we'll see. See how it gives us the map. Also, how many party members it gives us. I have no idea. Also, everyone is always aggroed at the start on skirmishes. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. But we want to bring along the people we've changed today. So us... Um, I knew we were getting a tutorial when we came in here, but yet it still surprised me. I want to bring in us, Vale, and... Uh, us, Vale, and Kigetsu, and Mavir, and that should probably be pretty much everyone, right? Yeah. Anyway. Emblem Alpex can use Engage Plus on any ally, putting both units in an engaged state without the need to sync. Okay, so it puts us both, so it puts us and another unit in engaged state. The sync skill Bond Forger increases the hit rate and aval rate of the user and nearby synced or engaged allies. The engage weapon, La Ration, Increases all adjacent allies' engage meters by one when the wielder initiates combat and defeats a foe. The engage skill attuned greatly increases the engage partner's stats while they initiate combat and defeat a foe. The engage skill Dragon Blast launches both a sword and magic attack, dealing heavy damage to even to foes with high defense and res. So it says it puts both units in an engaged state. Does that mean they're both in the engaged state? of our of our unit or does it mean we're in the engaged state they're in the engaged state of the ring they have equipped or I mean what if they're not equipped with a ring how would it work I think we need to try this in action emblem alpax's bond unlike other emblems emblem alpax's bond level is tied to the ally support level instead of bond xp no support level translates no support level translates to bond level 1 Support level C translates to bond level 5, B to bond level 10, and A to bond level 20. We got that. Okay, so this also seems like a great... Okay, so it's 12 people. What is this layout? This is nonsense. Okay. And they're all flyers? What? Okay, whoever's up here has, to, like, whoever's furthest away has to live by themselves. Let's do unit selection first and figure this one out. Um, wait, do I have 15? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh. <laughs> I forgot, it puts the people who were previously in your party at the top. Um, I did see that there were people who were, like, hey, we made... Like, Saphir's not used very often. It was nice to see her. Um, I think I, I agree. It is nice to have a character who isn't used very often. My only problem was that Movier's stats were just straight up better in, like, every category. It's very hard to justify Movier, like, Saphir over Movier. And to be honest, the res stat is one that really sticks out. It's just so good. So, yeah. Unfortunately, it's just... 
outclassed based upon who we could in theory remove from our party based upon who we want in because i definitely wanted veil in which kind of pushed ivy out and then Mavier, it, it was just like a pure stat space thing so yeah anyway um who am i like honestly like maybe i take seed all out because I need somebody who can live by themselves, but maybe Seedol could get somebody a double hit. Maybe I just take Seedol out and I just put in Mavier. I want to bring Veil. Who do I bring into Veil? Or who do I bring to get Veil in the party? Um, hmm, that's a tough one. I do want to bring you because I just upgraded you. This is tough to find. I guess. I don't want to pick John out. I'm going to take Hortensia out. I don't think we're going to have time for healing. Okay. So there's our units. I would think Veil and Divine Dragon make a lot of sense together. Because they are two units that naturally buff each other. However, could they actually live in the same location? Who knows? Let's move them around. Something like this. So they would both be immediately in danger, huh? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're going to be pretty good as a flyer. Uh, you should be in danger. Let's put you down here. Maybe I could run you in to get some danger happening. I actually think that you want to be over here. Uh, and then I probably want to chuck all Crest with you. I know I've just immediately done something that I started with, but that's fine. I'm gonna grab you and bring you back over here. Actually, both of you are gonna go on this side because there's one less unit on this side and we can potentially survive a little bit e more easily. Okay, so let's start with that. You can potentially kill one of the flyers. Marin can live. Here, I think we're fine. You're fine. Jean, you're a little bit out, but you're probably fine. You're fine, although it would make more sense to be that way around, because you can just fly over the top. Yeah, I think this makes sense. This is the best way we're going to have the party. Everyone aggro's turn one. Uh, let's figure it out. Fight. I also haven't done a ton of inventory management. I've just done the bare minimum to make sure everyone has, like, you know... Something equipped, basically, that makes sense. Uh, Mavier and, um, and Vale have full inventories, for instance, but they're maybe not the most optimal weapons. I haven't upgraded anything. We don't actually have any money, so, you know, like, that's fine. Right. Let's figure this one out. Anything for you. Hmm. I mean, I am Shall thinking I engaging here makes a lot of sense. Oh, I should have done the... Um, like this? Oh, because it's the first one in battle. We don't get to see it again. Okay. Um, then I kind of want to either call doubles or Astro Storm. I guess if I call doubles... Wait, do my doubles also get that backup ability where all the units can um, can attack? Let's have a look. So if I attack here, uh, also engaging makes a lot of sense. If I attack here with the wind sword, is it better to use wind sword or no? It's better to just attack with the silver dagger. Let's do this. Can all the guys attack? No, the chain attacks do not come through. Although maybe it's because they can't reach. That's the other option. This is fine. They should attack the illusory doubles first. Anything. Right. Uh, you're not mystical, so you don't get the extra hit chance. So I'm thinking you yes. move forward. Does engaging get you? Engaging gets you bonded shield, but that doesn't. Yeah, these are two like activatable abilities. Engaging actually doesn't get you anything immediately. We could go. No, we probably want to go here. Killer boats. Longbow. We better just go here, longbow, and just shoot. Maybe that's the play. Okay. Good damage. 
lower their stats. That can move you up here and go uh, Dragon Vein. Don't know if that's sensible. Lavier reporting. Engage. Uh, yeah, try not to get hit by like literally everything. I think this is actually fine. Great Aether. Hurricane Axe, which is effective against flying. And do that. Uh, you can break. now stand like. You could you could fire this weapon, I suppose. Um, because engaging doesn't get you anything either, does it? No. Uh, let's go for. Let's go for that. Let's fire. And let's just hit him. Yeah, sure. Why not? Nice. Okay. This side? You re Do you reduce damage or just... Yeah, you reduce damage. So I'm thinking... What does engaging with you do? Form an additional attack. Okay. Don't worry. Your defense is 17. Your attack is 51. Your speed is 33. You will double hit. Guaranteed. So let's move you here. Engaging doesn't really give you anything either immediately. So your job is going to be to wait. I can fight. When you're adjacent to an ally and it's full meter, you can select engage plus to engage with them. Emblem Alpax engages with the ally, and Alpax also enters the engage state. When Emblem Alpax and engaged ally remain adjacent, Dragon Blast becomes an even more powerful bond blast. Okay. So I could, in theory, engage plus. Okay. We'll hold off a second on that one. I think we're happy to just do this for just now. Um, Tis I. I mean, honestly, like, stay here. Seems pretty good. And then I am fly... Wait, you can't fly over these bits? It's impassable. Okay, sure. Sure, sure, sure. It's impassable. Why not? Um, I guess you're going to fly around here and wait. Who hasn't moved? Yes. Oh, Jean. Oh. Uh, you, you will be double hit. 55 versus 22. Yeah, so he would die. So let's move him over here. And then Louis. I live to serve. I guess, like, sit there. Engage so that you get the extra stats. Let's go. Alright, there's a chance we die. Like, in many different places. That's fine. Uh, 22%. 22%. Alright, second one understood what 22% meant. 36%. Okay. That wasn't as likely to happen. 24%. Logically, that should have happened. Yeah, I agree with the um, I agree with the stats. We do need to reload quite a lot of that. 38%. Okay. That's fine. I think we should just let them come to us, probably, in the future. That is not a kill, but it could have been a kill. Good to remember. Now that was a party. I'm not too worried because we're reloading anyway. I just want to see how each individual side goes. They do six to him. Okay, that's fine. But that's because they all went to the other side. He might take a lot more damage than expected. There's also crits that are expected to come in here. Okay, good to know. But probably not that many. Okay. That's fine. Defeated. Yeah. Okay, you're attacking the real one. Who does zero damage back to you. Okay, that's not ideal. Illusory, that's fine. Yeah, just wait for them to continue moving. This is fine, probably want to put Spear up in that corner. But apart from that, that's not an issue. Okay. Then you also go for a double. 
Defeated. Okay. And then you attack in here. That's fine. Okay. That's some damage. We crit. Okay. Oh, right, and then you do another 30 damage. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then this would activate. Okay, that does some pretty good damage. Right, let's do a time crystal. We understand what went wrong there. Actually, we want to go back all the way to the start of the player phase. So, problem on this side is that there's going to be too many enemies. Oh, no, no. I need to make a move at the start, which is, uh, like, unconditionally good. Okay. Let's work, let's work on doing that first, and then we'll work out what we're doing there. It, the unconditionally good move is going to be Louie. Right. Louie? Your correct move is to stand here engaged with the spear. It's a very easy one to have a look at. Your correct move is to get out of there. Okay. Here, I actually think we want to move further along this route. So maybe to this square? This would be fine, I think. Potentially, yeah. You're gonna go here, and you're gonna wait. This, I think, is fine. Okay, now we work out everyone else. <laughs> you were incredibly lucky to live. I think I'm probably better off doing something like this and trying to hit like that, but I can't even do it, so. Oh no. I how about three? Yeah, see, that's too many. Maybe this many could attack him? Yeah, this seems fine. This great Aether with the Hurricane Axe. Your move is to run down here. We could potentially engage Sigurd, and then that lets you run all the way down here. I think is a sensible plan. Um, I might just try and take on this one right at the top. Just to engage, and then just, like, let them hit us, basically. I think that'll be fine. Okay, you're gonna chill here. This side, we want to be a little bit more careful on. I'm gonna keep you nearby on this side, so I'm gonna move you... I want to try and get two to hit. There we go. And then I'm going to do that with the silver dagger. You're going to go behind. Killing Edge actually didn't do any damage, which is not great. Yeah, we could go Calib Calibog for extra damage, I guess. But if it doesn't do any damage, I guess we want to sit back here. Just Astra Storm. Uh... Oh right, yeah. Of course, we don't have any, we don't have like super range on Astro Storm. You're gonna hit this one. Now I have you. Okay. It's good to know that Astro Storm is much lower range. This is just something to note in our head. We knew it was lower range, but it's like it feels a lot lower as well. Because sometimes you know it doesn't feel as low as it is. So I think these two are good spots to stand. So this one and this one. So, uh, oh, wait, can I get you to, can you fire this? No, okay, that's fine. So you're gonna stand, yeah. So you're gonna stand here with the mini bow. Actually, maybe I just use the killer bow. Then you're gonna go here, and you're gonna dragon bane. Yes, okay. Let's see how this goes. We shouldn't have any deaths. In theory. <laughs> Alright, so they're all turning that direction now. This should be... Okay. Well, I was going to say it should be a miss, but apparently that hit directly. 
Okay. 18%. Nice. That's what we're after. Okay. First hit onto Mavir. This is the largest hit because now he gets ad additional defenses, which he didn't have before. Now, you see, now this is much less painful. We're flying down there. Okay. That one didn't hit. We did get to hit back. Okay. This is fine. First one hits us. Okay. Moving that way. See, I was trying to split up where the people were attacking from in the hopes that that would give us a little bit more survivability next turn. This is four damage twice. We're okay with that. It's going to get attacked again, though. Four damage twice. That's a crit, which is very much not appreciated. But he should live. <laughs> Hopefully. Marin will also live. Just about. Only because she dodged, but like, let's not worry about that. Right, we hit back for basically no damage. Okay. And you're attacking in as well. Twelve tw uh, twice. Okay, and Louis levels up. So no deaths, but this is a tough fight. Just because everyone's so split up, honestly. That's the main problem with it. Like, having such a split up fight means that we have, um... Yeah, we have a problem. Okay, so huge damage coming down. This side just seems horrible. I'll be honest, this side seems absolutely horrible. How do we deal with this? We could maybe use Override, grab a double kill here and then escape somehow. I guess what, yeah, I guess it would be run up, hit them both, and then like, try and just leave. I don't know how you're getting out of there. Yeah, this is messed up. I guess you have to get kills turn one. I don't know how we get kills turn one. That's, uh, okay. So you can't get past here. I guess we use the impassable bits a little bit more than we're using. So it makes sense for you to heal Louis. Right? I feel wonderful. Okay. And just stay out of range. Then maybe we use Brit um we use this to do extra damage against this unit. Okay. There's my opening. Yeah. Nice. So this is, sets us up nicely. Here. I'll do my best. I was thinking if I attack in with the killer bow, that might get us somewhere. It might get us somewhere. We're not getting a double hit though. Let's see. Did not crit either. Did lower their stats. Could head all the way over here. Uh, if I was going to twin strike, I should have twin striked earlier anyway, but... Yeah, maybe this. I guess there's a heal as well, which is probably beneficial. If this is war, so okay. <laughs> Hit him. Why do we repeat our mistakes? I do appreciate the heal. Right, we can then back off here. Uh, probably go... See, we got, like, we have back one more and call doubles. Hey, cool. We got extra speed. And then go here and Dragon Vein. The only other option is we go there and do this, but I don't think that's going to work. I think I want a Dragon Vein. Yeah, which heals him a little bit. I'm just hoping that we live, honestly. Uh, I, I'm not sure about our odds there, but we'll see. Okay. This is all messed up. This is this is more messed up, though. How do we get out of this? Alright, you. 
quadruple hit. Does not get us the kill, but it gets us a long way towards one. There we go. That's fine. What are you even meant to do here? Quite clearly something has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> like, maybe with the planning stage? Because this is horrible, right? Yeah, there's no way we... I don't even need... I don't need to play this out. There's no way we live here. So something is horrible. Let's go back to turn one. Okay. I actually don't even think her Louie move was correct. That, 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 that's how horrible I think that turn one was. I think we need to get ourselves grouped immediately. I don't think we can have a turn to like, you know, group up or to, you know, let them attack us. There's too many of them. So we need to attack them and we need to start killing them as soon as possible. Can I kill you? Like, we can throw an attack in. It's not gonna work, but we could try that and then just run away. So we can only run four anyway, so that's not gonna work. Yeah, you can't reach either. We could potentially try and get two to attack us up here. It's a potential option. We didn't take a ton of damage. So maybe something like that, turn one. And then, yeah, try and group up down here. Obviously by running down like this. Uh, maybe we try. We try and protect this. So these are flyers can go over the top. Try to think if there's a way to make that square inaccessible. I don't know if there is. Could run you in here. You can be attacked by a lot more in theory, but in practice, will you be? I don't know. Don't really want to attack by the magic user is the problem. Hmm. Guess maybe I want to do this, bring him further down towards this area. I do think the hurricane axe is the correct move here as well. Let's engage and get you all the way down here. Right, let's try that. You can't do anything immediately, which is a problem. Could run like that. Then just start running away. Got a steel bow. We'll send that to the convoy. Okay. So on this side, it now means that my current plan is to run, like, here, maybe? Engage. Then we can run in this way. Astra Storm. Maybe the one that's about to hit her. Maybe there's a plan, that we, there's, something, there's something we can do with that. I do think bogging the, the, the doubles is a potentially a good option. Like, just for a, tur a turn of stalling. I do wonder whether moving him like that is good. Hmm. Jean obviously needs to move down here. This, I think, is the only sent like, the only, like, 100% move we've made. I actually think you moving here is probably good. Maybe I just try and get somebody to As attack back here. So we could equip the killer bow. Well, I guess we want to equip the longbow and have you back there. And then just do this with a dragon vein. You haven't moved. Okay. We just try this and see what happens. Okay. So they're all heading right, unfortunately, apart from that one magic unit that unit that decided not to attack. Okay. That's a horrible crit. He isn't being attacked by as much, so there's still a chance he lives, but that critting is, like, actually atrocious. He might just die. Okay, never mind. He lives. Okay. I don't know how we made our turns worse, but, you know, we managed it. I went for an even safer option, and some somehow our turn is worse. Okay. Two damage off being killed. It's good. Okay. I think this gives us a chance of surviving turn two, potentially. 
Especially if we can bait more at the top here into a uh, leaf. But yeah, it's not ideal. She is being attacked by two this turn. Again, not ideal. But what we can potentially do is we can create a choke point up there, and then we can use that to uh, hold a couple of units out of the way until we're ready for her. To, until we're ready for other people to deal with them. Okay. Let's figure this out. Is there any side of the combat that we're happy with? I mean, Jean just needs to get out of there. How much damage is he taking from you? 47 twice. So that would be 25 twice. Yep. Okay, you would die. That's not ideal. Okay. Is there a way of stopping that from happening? Okay, so why is it because you can attack here? Yeah, so it's because you have the tomahawk. If I move there, apparently all the way back is is accessible. By which unit? Neither of those units can reach that far, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so so neither of those units can reach this far. So, it's just that unit here. I think we could engage and we could just attack it. With this spear, maybe? Could do a lot with the Brave Lance as well. We wouldn't kill it, though. We could break it with this one, potentially. Uh, what's the chance of killing with Killer Lance? 39% if we hit. Uh-huh. That's not bad. Let's try it. We didn't get the kill, but that's okay. We'll be fine. This opens up space for Jean to then, like, start running. It's essentially what we want Jean to do. Right. If you were dead... Okay, things change quite drastically. You guys can attack really far over. Looking at how far back we can retreat to. Okay. I'll do as you command. You're gonna tr retreat as far as you can. You're gonna go uh, seek Linda, and you're gonna heal. Yeah, you're gonna heal. How far can you retreat back? Retreat back there. So I want you here. Who can attack into this square? Three. Okay. Potentially could be fine. Potentially could be horrible. Um, the other option is to take three hits. And then that, yeah, who can attack into here? Only that guy. Okay, that makes sense. So I'm going to have you here. It means I want you to be there. Engaged with bonded shield on. You're going to go... Oh, yeah, that doesn't really work quite as well as I was hoping. You're called doubles. You're then going to go here. I'm going to time crystal that one. That was truly horrible. You're going to go here and you're going to use Dragon Bane. There we go. So we'll see how that looks. I think you're going to kill that one. One of these guys is going to kill that one, and then we're going to see what the rest of them do. What I'm hoping for is to get them into position to Dragon Vein them next turn, like right down there. Okay, this side is is hell. <laughs> it's actually just hell. Who who needs to die? So many. You need to die. You need to die. You need to die. You need to die. Who can attack into this square? Like you guys? Okay. If I block here, what were your ranges? None of them can attack up this far. So if I could block this, in theory, that would do it. The problem is these guys, I think, can kill you. You need to be tankier. Okay. Yeah. 
you need to be tank here. It could pair you up with Vale. Okay. If I paired you up with Vale, what are we looking at here? So pair you up with Vale. That then lowers your damage by three. Let's say that you hit into that square, you're doing 43. 43 into 23 is 20. 20 twice, you would actually live on this square, potentially. Yeah, you potentially live in this square. Okay. You wouldn't live in necessarily in that square. That's okay. So what I'm thinking is... Kill. Sit in this... Uh, use you. Kill. Sit in this square. You're going to kill that unit. Or that unit. Because you guys can't reach those squares. Yeah, yeah. So one of those is going to die. You could maybe kill them from this square. Like, move him. Kill that unit from this square. Use Pandreo to kill that unit. You try and kill one unit. You run back here. Maybe I use Engage. Plus? I don't know. Let's, let's, let's figure this out bit by bit. So... You're going to run down here. You're going to attack in with something that's going to get the kill. Um, as long as it hits, it really doesn't matter. That seems pretty good, though. Why don't you hit with that? I have this. There we go. There is nothing to fear. You're then going to move here. And you're going to wait. Right. Next move. Name you are going to move back. And switch to your longbow. And you're going to kill this unit. I can take on anyone. That's fine. So now I just need you to die. This is the most I can do. That's horrible. I could hope that I can dodge. Or we crit. Just crit. Allow me. Okay. Did not crit. Good to know. I can potentially kill here, but then we, we have our we have more problems. You're going to move back. Okay, so where can you move to? Okay. You're going to move back here. Going to engage. Wait. You could... Oh, you can only engage. You can't engage plus. Oh, because everybody else is already engaged. I see. Um, I do want to know how engage plus works. Does engaging get us anything? It gets us divine speed. I think it's maybe unnecessary, but... Maybe it's worth it. You're gonna go there. Is this the best weapon? Uh, the Mercurius is. Oh, no, it's not better. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah. So we do want liberation. You're then gonna go here. Would you die to this unit? 35, yes, you would 100% die. So you're going to go there. And you're going to uh, chill, I guess. Yeah, there's nothing I can do with you, actually, right now. Okay, you need to be tank here. I'm just working out people. I mean, there's a chance they just kill Mavier as well, which is not unlikely, but let's not worry about that. I'm sweating. And you, uh, flyers only, impassable, impassable, impassable. All the way back here. Then we just chug an elixir and we hope for the best. Alright. They went for Mavir. That's horrible. Because that means they think they can kill Mavir. Which, you know what? They're probably right. Okay. They didn't try and kill Pandreo. Like, they just didn't try. Which... Yeah. Maybe they thought they could die to Pandreo and that's what the problem was. Okay. 
you did not hit the double, which is less than optimal for us. And you are now attacking here. You get attacked a lot, but it doesn't matter. What matters is Pandreo, not Pandreo, Bobbier. He lives, okay. He doesn't because they got a 7% crit. This punishment <laughs> was earned as one of the four hounds. Marty, I will see you soon. A 7% crit. And then you kill him because you can get into the back. Never mind. Then he kills you. Stay focused. Okay. Interesting. I th well, assuming that she lives, I think I have a way out of this. If I understand how the crit system works well enough. Okay. This is fine. I see a bright light. You were attacked by another one from behind. It. Oh no! Were you attacked from one from the left, or was that one that flew over? I missed it. Okay. Right. I think I know how to live. Maybe I'm wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to skip the turn, please. Thank you. I don't know how we live on the next turn of that, by the way. But whatever. Right. Um. Here. Okay. What I want to check is who can attack that square right there. Because you didn't attack that square. So it must have been you who got through to that square? Yeah, yeah. So you can't attack that square if there's people in the way. That's fine. What I think I do is liberation. You don't attack that anyway. You go here. You're then gonna go here, engaged, but you don't attack. That's what I think we do here. And then I think we live. I don't know if this is gonna get us where we need to be, but okay. This might be a failed attempt, but even then, it's not too bad, because it's getting us information. Not information for winning this, but information about what we need to do to improve our party. The reason I didn't attack with Pandreo is I'm hoping that what this is going to do is it's going to change the crit logic, so the crit happens a turn later, which therefore means the crit will not hit um, Mavia. Now, is that a good bit of logic? I don't know. I think it is. I think that will work. Then Mavier lives. So the next attack will crit. But it's a 0% crit, so it doesn't crit. That's what I think has just happened there. I might be wrong. We still have no way of killing the other units there, by the way. Just as a FYI, we're still screwed, but... I think I have found a way of living an extra turn. <laughs> you know? That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fine. That's the person with 2 HP getting their revenge. Okay. This is fine. Yep. Then you're also going to attack him. This should be fine, unless this is a crit as well. No, okay. So we do need her to heal. We would ideally like to find a place where only one can attack her. Okay. We survived another turn. I mean, your correct move, I think, is move here with the um, killer lance out. And like, or no, probably with the spear out, and then you just chuck a spear attack in. Sure. Okay, he levels up. Nice. So you can run out there. That's fine. Right. Um, 
Do you have any way of getting out of here? You'd be attacked by two units again. This is impassable. Um, none of you have range. Yeah, none of you have range, so actually this is a safe square. It might seem weird, but this is actually an incredibly safe square. I have no healing. Alright, well, um, definitely attack then with that knowledge. Okay. So we do need to heal you as well. Good to know, good to know. Um, we're screwed. So you need to heal this turn. You cannot get in range to heal. Alright, so we're just dead. Um, the, the, how do we get out of here? Like, essentially, what we would have to do is we'd have to kill all of these units and heal. Yeah, that's not happening. I, like, th this map is, this map is crazy. We are just not set up to defeat this map, but it's a good um, power level uh, checker. So, what did we learn? Let's try and take get some takeaways from this. Kigetsu needs more damage, because if we try and attack with Kigetsu right now... Look at that, that's just not... Like, that's not going to do anything. Now, why is that? It's because we got 34 attack versus 34 defense. Okay, so a little bit more strength would at least allow him to do damage. So if we used a uh, Kalad Bulg, that would also help. But, given that killing, killing Edge is reaching its limit, he just basically needs something that allows him to do damage. Okay. Zalkov. Uh, either needs to be tankier or dodgier. Either one would work. Um, that's just simple as that. Um, Marin, I think is fine. Could do with some increased... Either tankiness or damage. I think increased tankiness would be fine. All crest actually could do with some extra damage. Um, but that might be in the form of Luna crits, which would be fine. Louis is perfect. Like, honestly, Louis is the only person holding his own in this area. Um, well, I say Gold Mary was also fine. I think Gold Mary could do with being either tankier or damaging her. Maybe we get rid of momentum for something that allows her to stand still. We don't tend to run her around, we tend to have her sitting somewhere. So maybe Lance Power might be a move for her, if we don't think that she... Her Avo's pretty bad, right? She's not really gonna dodge very much. Maybe we just give her Lance Power and then we, um... I guess we maybe give her Lance Power and then something that lets her survive uh, longer, like maybe hold out would be good, maybe give her um, resolve, depending on how we want to go with this. Something like that's a path for her, potentially. Veil. Honestly, like, let me just test. Can Veil attack? Yeah, so Veil she does okay. Like, that's fine. She she probably needs more damage. I mean, Thoron does quite a lot. This doesn't do very much, but yeah. She might just need more damage. I think Vale probably needs more levels with Celica. Uh, Mavier needs more levels of Ike and needs to be tank here, but it's not a bad start. Panette needs to be tank here. I think uh, we get rid of Dex on Panette entirely. I think going for a crit build on, on Panette is fine with Killer Axe, but I think that. What we need to do is we need to give her things that allow her to survive when she's not max HP. So potentially we could give her some of Ike's things. So maybe we give her Wrath from Ike plus Ike's Defense and Res and maybe that gives her what she needs. Maybe we increase her HP and then we give her Defense and Res, something like that. Um, Divine Dragon, his AVO is currently 134. Oh, sorry, 137. Uh, let me just test something here. Well, suppose your your avo is that this dragon vein. Your avo is one four nine. So right now his avo with people who he's not like he's got one high support, another high support, and then like you who he has basically no support with. He's at one three seven. So his um, dodge is really high, right? Extremely high. So. I think this is the right path for him. 
he needs more damage, but that might just mean that we move on from liberation to a, you know, sword that does damage. Like, potentially a silver sword if we can upgrade it. Pandreo is not outspeeding these guys, but honestly, like, they have 33 speed. He would need a lot of speed to do it. And in most combats, he would be able to at least, you know, kill a unit to gain some speed. It's not really a fair combat to check. Uh, let's say he got two extra speed from this, that would put him at 37. Yeah, so even with 37, he isn't doing it unless he kills a single unit. Like, if he killed this unit, he would then double, but anyway. So there's, there's some things to think about. Anyway, one thing that we also want to test here is we want the time crystal all the way back to turn one. Not that we want to play turn one, because I've given up on this one. What I want to do is I want to do this. What does Engage Plus do? So we get Lyration, which is not a particularly good sword, uh, at least compared to our swords. Holy Aura, Attuned, and Dragon Blast. Okay. If unit initiates combat and defeats a foe, grants Engage Partner plus four to all seven basic stats while engaged. Okay, let's do this. Emblem Eternal. So we have the effects of Holy Aura Attuned and Bond Blast, but we lose the Marth effects. Okay. Interesting. Um, that's fine. You have gained these effects, and you've lost the effects of Emblem Celica for the for this time. Okay, so it's good to know. It's good to know. So it's they both gain the bond effects. Okay, and then I guess we gain the dragon effect no matter what. This time crystal, I'm sure we can test this as well. Okay, so you're gonna just run up here as, part, as my testing buddy. Right. Oh, uh, engage. There we go. So that's what he looks like with this, but he gains these effects. Okay. He gains the mystical effect, but we have the dragon effect. Okay. I like it. Okay, we now understand how this works. There is also a world where we can use Bond Forger to do something cool. But anyway. But also this... Does this raise our own res? No, I don't think it... Well, maybe it does, because we're 137? 45? Huh. Max plus 90. In 45 for being next to this one. This should not increase res, but I guess if we got somebody... I guess we... Well, we had Panette and Pandreo next to us before, and we still only got 37. There's 30... Yeah... 37 must be coming from dual support. So that looks like it's only going to give a 45 bonus. So what do you need to do to get max 90 bonus? I don't know. I don't know. If that gives 40... If a fully... Uh, like, you have... Wait, no. You have half support with us. You had full support with us, right? Uh, No. Maybe not. Ah, maybe, uh, you know what? Maybe this... I understand, right? This must just be, if you have an ally you have an A support with, you gain 90, uh, you gain 90 AVO. It's not number of allies, it's one specific ally. And that's why we gain 45 here when we were next to these two, because we have B level supports with both of them. That makes a level of sense, right? Huh. Okay. So we've learned. Right. I'm going to give up on this. System. Um, retry? Retry? Is that the one that you do to get back to the menu that lets you leave? I can't remember. We did save outside of this, so we can't. We can just back out again. It's not the end of the world. I also have a save at the end of the previous episode, so it's also not the end of the world if we have to redo some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can return to the world map here. Okay. So. What's the plan? Well, the plan is to take some of what we've learned, upgrade some people, potentially, and then uh, to go and do a paralogue next time. 
because uh, we do have some paralogs that are of our level. Knowing that that was a level 14, uh, sorry, a level 15 one, does at least give us some kind of level to balance ourselves against, because that was a level 14 for the next um, main quest, and these are level 14s as well. So I guess we should probably do these level 10s first, and we probably want to be very well upgraded by the time we leave, right? We want to do both of these and then be like properly upgraded and ready to go. Although, you know, maybe the main quest won't be that difficult because um, they don't all run at you at once and they're not all flying units. You know, you could actually potentially set up a wall and all your units aren't split up at, you know, into units of two, meaning that all your units have to be optimally set up, potentially. You know, they might do that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm going to end the episode there and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Rise from a thousand years.